To conclude our chapter on keyframe animation, let's take a look at a cool new feature of 3ds Max 2018, Motion Paths. A motion path is a Bezier spline curve representing position data. Motion Paths replaces a feature known as trajectories that appeared in prior versions of the software. Trajectories have been upgraded, and now we have motion paths that give us a lot more power and flexibility in editing the position data on a keyframed object. I've got keyframes on the camera here. Let's go ahead and maximize the top viewport. I'll click in that view and maximize it with Alt-W. Get in a little bit closer with the mouse wheel. Select the camera. Go over to the Motion panel. And there are two panels within Motion, Parameters and Motion Paths. Click Motion Paths, and we see the path of the selected object. If we deselect the object, by default, we won't see the path. I'll reselect it and get in a bit closer. And what you may notice is that there are some white dots on the path. And those white dots represent frames. And the spacing between the dots or between the frames indicates the speed of motion. Here at the end of the motion path, the dots are close together, meaning that over the course of one frame or 1 30th of a second, the object is not moving very much. It's moving more slowly. But over here, the spacing indicates that a greater distance is being traveled in one frame, and that means the object is moving more quickly. All right, let's edit up this motion path. First, we want to change up the display properties a little bit. There are some rollouts here. Let's open up the display rollout, and we have the path coloring. It's defaulted to a gradient, and I'm just going to change that to a solid color, set that to uniform, and now the path will be drawn in solid red, and if it doesn't update right away, you can just refresh the display with the middle mouse button. Just wiggle that around a little bit. We've also got the ability to display frame numbers, and that's very useful. That's the key times here. Turn that on, and then we see at the beginning and end there are some numbers. The object is at this location at frame 1 in the timeline, and at this position at frame 150 in the timeline. We can go ahead and start editing the path. We can just click on this keyframe at the end here. And as soon as we click on that, we're automatically dropped into sub-object keys mode. And we can choose the Select and Move tool, grab that and move it. But what you're seeing right now is I've moved the tangent handle and not the keyframe itself. If you want to move the keyframe and not the handle, you have the ability to do that. Let me undo that movement. For the keyframes at the beginning and end of the path, I want those to behave like a corner point on a spline. And to do that, I don't want to move the tangent handle. I want the tangent to be right on top of the keyframe. And what I can do is just turn off display all handles over here. Switch that off. And now when I reselect, I'm only selecting the keyframe and not the handle. I can move that keyframe around. That's very useful. Let's add another keyframe back up here. Scroll up in the key controls area. I can click on add key and then click anywhere on the path. And I've got a new keyframe there. Then I can click the add key button again to turn that tool off and then select the newly created keyframe. Get in a bit closer with the wheel. And this one has automatic tangents by default. The incoming tangent shows a green box and the outgoing shows a purple box. And if we deselect the keyframe, then those handles go away. So now we have the ability to select either the keyframe or the handles. Got a little bit more control there. And as I move that handle around, you can see how that's affecting the path. If I stretch them out, then the object is going to move very quickly through that keyframe. All right, very cool. I'm just going to make a very simple change here. Just edit up my motion path. I'll bring this endpoint over here and bring this one up a bit. And notice that as I move these around, I'm changing not just the position of the object through space, but also the speed of motion. Right now, I've got a slowdown here in the middle. 
And I can just grab one of these tangent handles and stretch that out and try to equalize that velocity. Also, if I move a keyframe, such as this one here at frame 76, I move it, let's say, forward or back, I'm changing the timing there as well. Notice that by moving that to a further distance, we've got a faster motion through this period and a slower motion through that period. Well, I can fix that by moving the keyframe in time. And that's done from the timeline down here. I'll click in the timeline to deselect everything. Here's my keyframe at frame 76. And I know that's a position key because it's shown in red. And then I can drag that around. And as I do that, you can see how that's affecting the timing interactively here. This is very cool. It's gonna make it really easy for you to customize your camera movements or any other position-based keyframes. Let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna exit out of sub-object and exit out of motion paths completely. I can either choose parameters or I can even just deselect the object. And then let's take a look at that. We'll go back to our four viewport layout, Alt-W. Here's the camera view. Select that and hit Alt-W again to maximize it and play back the animation. I've also got some rotation keys on here. So we're seeing that happening as well. But I've made some simple changes to the position keys. The motion paths don't affect the rotations, only the position. All right, excellent. That's a brief introduction to motion paths, and it concludes our chapter on keyframe animation.